So besides the environmental variant and the mobile variant, we also had a network variant. And I, you know, I kind of wanted to do this just to tie it back into Unit 4, among other things, but it kind of gives you some idea of the fact that you can make these models very versatile and you can analyze them in a number of different ways. So here we have uh, one of our networks, in this case it's just a random network that's been created. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and hit set up and we hit go and we can see the disease spreading through the network. Right now, uh, because of the fact that in this particular model, some of the nodes are not going to be attached to the overall network, some of the individuals aren't, we actually don't always see 100% infection. So we have to think a little bit more about how to address that when we're analyzing uh, the model results. So for instance, let's say we want to look at how degree, the average degree of an individual, this connections per node, affects the um, number of the, the um, the, the overall spread in the network. Well, we can't look at it to 100% infection, but maybe we can say how many people, for instance, are infected after 50 ticks. So uh, let's go ahead and create an experiment that does that. So we can go to tools, behavior space, pull it up, and there is one called degree already in here. It varies the degree. Uh, the average number of connections per node from one half to four by increments of, of a half. Uh, and this is just saying, how many connections on average should we have per node? Um, and so we can have a half because we can say roughly every other person has a connection, right? Um, and so then we can just repeat the model 10 times, uh, running it 10 times for each of those values. Uh, we can count the number of turtles with infected as our measure of output, and we can set it to stop after 50 ticks. So basically we're saying run for 50 ticks, tell me how many people are infected, that's what I'm going to use as my measure as to how the density of a network affects uh, infection spread. So let's go ahead and run that actually, um, and we will then pull the results into R and analyze it there. All right, so if we turn off update view, update. Somehow I'm not clicking quick enough. Uh, we'll see the model run. And it takes a little bit slower than some of the other models because. Uh, the networks actually create a lot more uh, agents because each of the links is now an agent as well, right? Uh, so it's all done. Let's pull it into R. Okay, we're back in R, and we're going to start out almost exactly the same way we start out uh, for both the summary graphs and the environmental graphs. We'll pull in the HMISC library. Uh, we'll pull in our data file, which is now called degree because we're looking at the degree experiment. Uh, we'll give it some column names to make it easier to manipulate, right? Um, and you know, now we're actually our, the output of our data file is now actually the number of infected, right? Not the time to percent, 100% infection. So it's more like the time series data in that respect. But everything is stopping at time ticks 50 and we're only outputting those results. Uh, so that was one other small change we made to the behavior space, if you notice when we ran it, right? Um, and then we're gonna aggregate that data by degree. And they're going to get some errors because of some different NAs and stuff like that that are in there. And then we'll just show the summary data, right? So this degree means standard deviation, degree means standard deviation. What's interesting, right, is that you get high standard deviations for these middle ranges. And that's basically because in this case, the network's not very connected. In this case, the network's almost always connected. But in between, you get these cases where fewer or more individuals get connected to the network. Um, and so then we can just plot all the data, right? Um, if we look at that, right, we get a graph that looks like this. And as you can see, right, you get this case where a lot of uh, people wind up getting affected, but for some of these middle degrees, right, you get cases where quite a few people don't get infected by 50, and that might be because the infection is trapped in a small part of the network that's not connected to the rest of the network, right? Um, but if we then, save this off, or we then look at the aggregate data using the aggregate command, right? You see, it shows up as these huge variations. But this is one of the reasons why I often like to look at all the data, right? Because it's not really a matter of huge variations. It's a matter of that there are a couple of data points where the actual infection gets stuck in a part that's not connected to the large graph. And so you'd have to think, you should actually not be treating this now as normally distributed data because it actually has 
this kind of bimodal distribution where some of the data is here and some of the data is here. And so that means this graph is actually somewhat misleading, right? Because it's actually showing you these huge standard error bars, but because the data is actually split across two modes, it's not actually a very informative graph, right, as to what's going on, because we're not telling you anything about the data that's down here. Instead, uh, you should think about some sort of other graph, or think about changing your model uh, to allow to make sure that everyone is connected to the network, for instance, in which case this would be a better description of what's going on. So anyways, that's just, I, I thought it was an important point to make. Uh, the critical point here is that you can use network data in the same way as you could use anything else. Here we're using degree to control the outputs, but you could have used a clustering coefficient or something else uh, as your independent, or as your, your um, uh, independent variable to control the network structure.